Tom's Friends video games are a pretty interesting part of Tom's Friends. There is quite a lot of them, and you would think that for the amount of them they would be good quality. And you would kind of be wrong, but a lot of people have never really talked about the Tom's Friends mobile games. Now, a lot of these games were originally made for like the early iPads and all the smartphone technology was brand new. But do these games hold up? Are these games even good? Were they ever good? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this video. So I have a handful of Thomas Mobile games today to cover, and I'm going to see if they're worth playing or if you should just skip them. Without further ado, let's get into the first mobile game on this list. Thomas and Friends Talk To You is a game made by Toy Talk. And in this game, you could talk to Thomas to guide him on his journey. It's a great idea for a game, and I really wanted it to work, but it was discontinued in 2018, and I managed to get the app for it only to show me to him, wanting me to enter my parents' email address. And when I did, nothing actually happened, and it made me very sad. But luckily for me, people recorded these episodes, so I got to see what this game is like. So we get into the game, and uh, oh, this is a very good lip syncing there. The game has a total of 8 episodes where you can go talk to Thomas, and that is a fair amount for this game. Episode 1 starts with Thomas, Percy, and Emily having to go to bed, and I have to tell Thomas goodnight. After my extremely calming goodnight I give him, he wakes up in the middle of the... sunset? I'm so excited to have you here with me! <laughs> Hold up, if I'm here with Thomas, then why am I standing directly in front of him, looking at him, while he's been sleeping this whole time? Where am I sleeping? I'm sorry, but no. Nobody is allowed to talk. <sighs> Are you having fun too? You know, maybe it's a good thing this game got discontinued. Thomas and Friends Talk To You is kinda boring. It's a really cool idea and I really wanted it to work, but it's cool and that's kind of wears off on you. And once you see the actual story, it's just like, boring. I want to tell Thomas where to go or what to pull. Not good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. I also don't want to learn what this triangle means, Emily. Thomas and friends talk to you is a solid skip. And it's not like you could play this game anyways, since the servers are down. <laughs> This game pack is one of the earliest Thomas Mobile games that was at its core a game. Thomas Game Pack is a collection of three mini games. You got matching missions, cargo mazes, and engine puzzles. These games are very basic and they go on forever. Well, except for the puzzle, that one actually doesn't, unless you like to just do the same puzzle over and over again. Matching missions is, well, the first one I'm going to talk about, is all about guessing what card matches the other. There's absolutely no punishment if you get it wrong, and you can play it infinitely. Once you complete all the cards, the engine says something like, great job, and you go on to the next engine and the cycle repeats and I get kind of tired of it. If you have a deck of cards, you can get the same experience from this game, and they don't add anything that would actually make the game interesting besides the convenience of it being an app. The funny thing about this minigame is that it's actually pretty solid and that I have played it for about an hour because it's pretty addicting, but it doesn't feel like a good mobile game and I don't feel like you should also spend around an hour or two playing this game because it's not worth it. Well, we got like two other games to play, so how could the next one disappoint? Cargo mazes. A maze? This will be awesome. Mazes are cool. Wait, this isn't even a maze. This is extremely clear where we are going here. Also, gotta love the sliding PNG. Your main objective of this maze is to get these three items laying on the track, and it can just be like livestock to like literal uh, pieces of cargo you just need to pick up online. It's uh, very interesting, but once you get that, you get to finish the game and go to the exit. Whenever you finish the game, it switches from Model Series James to CGI James, so whoa, that's cool. This is by far the laziest game of the pack. How is this even a maze? Not a single person is confused by this. And I know this game is made for like three-year-olds and everything, so keeping that in mind, it's not like a terrible game, but I just wish that it got a little harder overall while the game goes on. And it does try to change things up, but it doesn't actually help because you actually can very clearly see where you're going to get stuff. 
Probably the only things I really like about the game are the model series PNGs and that everything works as intended because I don't really like glitchy games, but since this game works as intended, it's not like a great game because the way it was intended isn't good, but at least it works well. Okay, next we have the uh, puzzle game. There's no way you could mess up a puzzle game, it has to be good. Fizzling fireboxes, great job. All right, I'm done with this game. Lifton Hall is a surprisingly good game. It's more of a game collection, but this game came out around the time Blue Mountain Mystery came out, and we got a decent amount of games that take place at the Blue Mountain Quarry. Also, this screen of how you could choose the games is so cool! You can move Thomas forward or backwards, and I love it and it's just so fun. For the first game, we have Quarry Match. It's a very simple game that is only there for kids to learn their shapes. Obviously, I know my shapes, so I did not need to learn this again. It's a very basic game that works well, nothing too much to talk about. Next minute game is Load Up and Wash Down, which is a game where you have to give coal and water to Thomas, Percy, and James. You have to clean them, and the faster you do, the more engines you get at the end of the game. This game is pretty fun, and it's what I would expect from a mobile game. It uses the touchscreen well, it makes logical sense for a railway, and it's replayable. It's a solid mini game. Spoiler Spoiler is a game that has stakes, or at least it feels like it. If you do nothing, it's actually kind of boring. This game is pretty cool. You have to patch engines because they are running so fast they have holes in them. Not entirely sure why that is, but it's a neat concept. The more engines you patch, the harder the game gets. I really like this game. It has some actual challenge to it. Hide and Peep is a memory game. Oh no, my memory is terrible. You have to pay attention to where Luke is going. You'll always have two options to see where Luke is going. If you get it wrong, you just go back, which is a shame that there is no punishment for not paying attention. Once you follow Luke enough times, you'll get the final area where you have to point a light at Luke, and then you win. Uh, well, nothing actually, you just kind of win a, a screen. It's a very simple game, and it will get very repetitive, and I don't really ever want to go back to this game because, well, it's just a little boring. But it's a solid mini game, and if you play it once, it's uh, it's pretty good. Stone Shape Cutter. All you do is cut rocks on the lines it tells you to. There's absolutely no challenge to it if you're following a line. It would have been nice to cut the stone shapes from the image you get of what it's supposed to look like in the end. But nope, kids game can't have challenges, I guess. And finally, we have Rock Drop. This game made me have beef with Owen. Yeah, that's right, Owen. I'm looking at you. I'm still mad. In this game, you have to put narrow gauge trucks onto Owen's platform. He will then lower them down to move them to fill up Thomas's trucks. Then, you will make Thomas go and the cycle repeats. It's a solid game, and I really like it. But, while I was playing this on stream, I clicked a narrow gauge truck to come to me, and Owen just wouldn't give it to me, leaving me soft locked in the game, and I had to wait until it was over. For this reason alone, Blue Mountain Mystery is a 0 out of 10 movie, too much Owen. So what do I think of Lifton Hall overall? Well, Lifton Hall is an actual good Thomas game. It stays true to what Thomas is, it has a solid selection of mini games, and it actually looks good. The only major problem I have with the game is that there is literally no punishment for losing. You can just flat out do nothing, and you'll always get the great job, even though I did absolutely nothing. You might as well just tell me, congratulations, you're a loser! If you are able to play this game, you should play it. Lifton Hall is such a solid Thomas mobile game. Oh yeah, Express Delivery is the first game on this list to be made by Budge Studios, a mobile developer that makes actual good mobile games. This game has an actual plot to it, which is really shocking. It is Charm Hat's birthday, and like the swab man he is, he has thrown his own party and needs his get stuff for it. So we choose from three engines, Thomas, Ryan, or Emily. You only get to play these three games for free, and the others you have to buy for $7. So you go around the tracks placing items to make this island beautiful, and you also can go find a buried treasure to add to your collection of gifts to make this the best party ever. We get some new characters in this game, like Oliver's twin and his other twin, and oh my gosh, there's an army of Olivers, and yellow big Mickeys. It's kind of crazy how we have all primary colors of big Mickey. A nice thing about this game is that you get to drive your engine. You don't get to choose where you go or what points you're set to, 
but it's basically what I would want in a Thomas mobile game, just to drive my engine around. There are some neat details in this game, like how they copy and pasted so many buildings, they forgot to change the size of the recolored buildings so they look weird. Probably the biggest problem I have with the game is that there's literally no ending. We do all of this for Sir Tom Hat's birthday, and we don't even get a thank you. The game just resets like nothing ever happened. Did they just throw away all the party decoration? Express Delivery is a good game. Being able to drive your engine is such an underrated feature in Thomas mobile games because we don't get to do it often. I wish that I could have played the full game, but it is nice that the full game only costs $7 and not like one for every single item in the game. When you buy the basically expansion pass, you don't get anything game changing in the game, just more of the game. So that is really cool. And if you're able to, you should definitely play Express Delivery. King of the Railway Game Pack is a lot like Lifton Hall, but better. You can move Thomas forwards and backwards, just like in Lifton Hall, but this time you move Thomas to get to the game you want to play, making this feature have an actual use. Let's start with probably the lamest game in the collection, Castle Builder. Castle Builder is a game where you place blocks to build an outline of a castle, which don't get your hopes up for any sort of strategy because it doesn't actually matter where you place the blocks just making the shapes of the blocks have absolutely no value. You can just place the blocks anywhere you'd like as long as the castle is full and built. That's all that matters. This game could have been good if you couldn't place blocks outside of the lines or inside a block. It would have just made the game a lot more strategic and enjoyable. Mission at the Castle Mines is a very basic game. You have to find Steven in the mines, just like the movie. So you have to take the right track to get to him. And when you're near him, he whistles to let you know where he is. And then you find him. This might sound boring, but there's actually another part of this that makes this game fun. There's a treasure chest in the mine near Steven, and you have to find the right path to get to it. And once you do, you get some sets of armor to collect, and once you collect them all, the Earl gets to wear it, which is really cool, but I also do feel like it wasted my time. Trouble on the tracks is the worst one of the collection. All you do is avoid broken parts of the track, like 10 times. It's so boring, there's not much to it. Steven spruce up. This is just the best game in the collection. This game is a, such a perfect tie-in to King the Railway. In this game, you get to repair Steven. You get to clean him, you get to get rid of rust, you get to replace broken parts, and you get to paint him. It's all in the timer, too. You can't fail the game, but you can beat your personal score. I really like this game, and it makes me feel important to the movie. Like, yeah, the way Steven looks here, all me. I did it. Cranky's Dog Drop is the game where you have to catch the cargo Cranky drops into your trucks. It's a pretty boring game, but if you play the game that it wasn't intended by personally hitting the cargo as it falls or moving it out of your trucks, it's a really fun game. Working together, it uses the Hero of the Rails music on its tile screen, so that is also just beautiful. Gameplay wise, you have to move Thomas, Percy, and James' notches to get them all the highest speed to get to the castle in time. It's a great concept, but all you do is just move the notches up for three engines. It would have been better if there was more sort of a cooldown for this system, so you also could be like putting coal in the fireplace, but for what it is, I really like it, but it's not a game I'll be replaying anytime soon. And that is it for all the games for this game pack, and wow, I really love this game pack. It's not really the best Thomas Mobile game out there, but it's a huge improvement from Lift and Hall. And all the mini games here, except for one, are really enjoyable and feel like an actual game. It's kind of funny how I am complimenting a game for being a game, but you are able to play this game, you totally should. It's such a solid pack. Race On is a very interesting game. You get three maps, but I only can play one because, well, you have to pay for the others, but since the game isn't up anymore, that isn't happening anytime soon. Race On is a racing game where you mostly race by yourself. The main reason to race is to rebuild the map, and somehow you rebuild the map by winning races? Racing is sort of weird. You mainly tap this button, but then they introduce a new way to gain speed. So many times, without warning, they'll just throw you into it, which can be confusing at times. Also, the racing is very boring. Also, it doesn't help that the way you gain speed is so random that there's no strategy to it. It's just do what they tell you to do on screen in time, and then there's your boost. Another reason why this game is boring is that for most of the game, you're racing against nobody. Just the clock. 
which makes actually racing against an opponent a huge highlight. But because the game is ridiculously easy, you see your opponent and then after you do like your first move, you no longer see them for like the rest of the race. One thing I actually like about this racing game is that the game will actually let you lose, which means that you'll actually have to pay attention to the game. Which sounds like a funny compliment, but I know a lot of kids racing games cheat for the player, so it's nice to have a game that doesn't do that. But now we should talk about the microtransactions, because there's a decent amount of them. The game has 17 characters and 3 maps. You want to know how many you get for free? Thomas, Henry, in one map. That's right, out of 17 characters, you only get 2 of them for free. The maps, I kind of get. I mean, I don't like it, but it makes sense why I'd have to buy those. But only getting two characters is unacceptable. I have no idea why Enemoko Brands, or whoever decided to make the paywall thing, thought this was a good idea. Okay, I know I'm making Grayson sound like pretty trash, but I do actually like some things about it. The music choices are really good, and I really like the character models and buildings. I also like the camera tool that follows engines. It's also fun to tap on them and hear them whistle, though there's no cooldown, so you can press it as fast as humanly possible and it kind of hurts your ears. And that's, that's kind of it. The ending of the first map just ends with a paywall, not even a congratulation. Race On is a fun game in concept, but the way it turned out is very boring and I would not recommend this game. <laughs> Thomas and Friends Minis got a mobile game, some time ago actually. I played this game when it came out in 2018, but nostalgia won't blind me for this game because after one hour, I dropped the game in 2018. And I wanted to drop this game after the first level, but I had a video to make so I couldn't. Minis game isn't a bad game, it's just boring. You get to build your layout and add whatever you want as long as you buy the hundreds of microtransactions. And after you make your layout, you get to watch the engines go. You can't control how fast they go, but you can stop them. The game also has an AR mode, which I gotta admit is really cool, but uh, it doesn't improve what's already wrong with the game. I think the game isn't a bad game, I just think it's really boring and not a game I would want to play again. Gogo Thomas. I know a lot of people I've talked to liked Gogo Thomas as a kid. I have no memory of this game, but I did play this game when it came out because I found an old iPad screenshot and it showed I had it. And honestly, this game is pretty solid. It has a great intro and you get to race engines. This game is what Race On wanted to be. Each race you get to race an engine. You have a spin move that acts like a boost and you have to constantly keep on tapping this meter to go fast. It's a really good racing game, and it keeps you from getting bored because you can upgrade your engine to go faster, which means that you can keep on playing the game and have an actual reason to keep on racing. You get one island for free, and you have to buy the rest, and uh, whoa, $20? Wait, this used to be 32 The current price is still too much for this, this should be like... I don't know, $10, I prefer 5 but not like 20 or 30 Also, the only free character you get is Thomas, which I really hate. There is no reason to only get Thomas, and if Butch Studios or whoever is in charge of controlling the free content ends up seeing this video, uh, please change that. I would really like to actually just not have to pay a ridiculous amount of money for 90% of the characters. I had a lot of fun with Gogo Thomas. It's overall the best Thomas mobile game I have played. I've had a lot of fun racing. It's actually engaging, and I'm not bored on my mind like Race On. I know I haven't had a lot to say about Gogo Thomas, but this game is very solid, and even though we get to pay for a lot of it, which I wouldn't, if I were you, I wouldn't pay for this because it's just a little too much. Gogo Thomas is just such a solid Thomas mobile game. And for me, it's exactly all I would want to do in a Thomas mobile game. I highly recommend this game. Out of all these Thomas mobile games I have played, they are all so cool. But there are so many Thomas mobile games that we just can't play anymore. It's because... Hit Entertainment and Mattel have just delisted these apps. I don't know if it's due to like contracting reasons or just uh, them not updating the apps to work with current versions of mobile devices, but either way, it's sad that we can't play these anymore. I would really like it if Mattel were to put all of these old Thomas Mobile games on like a whole collection to buy one day. 
because I would love to own all these old mobile games that you just can't get anymore. But out of the ones I have covered today, are any of these games actually worth playing? Yes, I would actually say so. If you can play King of the Railway Game Pack and Go Go Thomas, these are great games, and I don't think you'll regret playing them. And if you really liked King of the Railway Game Pack, you also might like Lift and Hall. Well, that was it for me playing these mobile games that are mainly meant for children. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.